Hey, what's up, guys? Today we'll be designing a character. So we'll be designing a Pembroke Welsh Corgi character based on realistic photo references. Okay. So if you just want to see the speed draw, uh, speed drawing video of this uh, tutorial, go ahead and click on the info card now. But in this short tutorial, I'll be going over the details step by step of how to create this uh, Corgi design from start to finish. So. Uh, feel free to check out the video chapters in the description below to preview all the steps or to skip to the chapter that interests you the most. And if you already love the completed drawing you see here and would like to support my channel, please hit like and subscribe now. Okay, so you're going to need a computer, a laptop or a computer, or and you need a drawing tablet, and you're going to need Photoshop to complete this tutorial. So go ahead, uh, you can uh, uh, click on the info card uh, to check out like like uh, what kind of computer I suggest and what kind of type of tablet I suggest. And uh, if you have never drawn in Photoshop before, uh, there's another info card you can click on, and I show you like the basic setup of how to start drawing in Photoshop. Okay, so to briefly go over all the steps, we're going to begin by roughing in the basic shapes and forms, designing the basic shapes and forms, and then. And, uh, refine the rough sketch with detailed line work. After that, we're going to trace the pencil drawing with marker uh, digitally uh, and then add color and finally thicken the profile lines to complete the drawing. So, I'll be doing speed drawings throughout the whole video. So, if you're drawing along, feel free to pause the video whenever you like to catch up with me. Okay, so are you ready? Well, let's get started. All right, so before we start our design, let's take a look at some reference pictures of corgis that, uh, and find out what features and characteristics we can use to create our design. So I went ahead and went online real quick and found some uh, uh, several uh, corgi uh, references that I think it's pretty uh, pretty decent. Uh, that's like what I want. Um, so I remember I found four. Where's that? Was the last one? Where's that last one? Oh, there you go. Okay, so, uh, so I went ahead and found, found some uh, Corgi references, and then because we're, we're designing a Corgi character, so you want to know what a real Corgi looks like, even though you're going to put it into your, your input, your own design, your own style, and uh, you're going to make your own version of like a uh, like a Corgi character, you do want to still uh, have the characteristics and features of a real life Corgi. So let's take a look. So Corgi likes to have their tongue hanging out like that, um, long nose, kind of like a fox, uh, sharp, pointy ears, um, then uh, you can see like the... The face, uh, the, the fur pattern on the face, kind of like orange on the top, around the eyes, the ears are orange, and then the rest is white, okay? Uh, Corgi likes to laugh, always have a big smile, see? Likes to smile, good Corgi. And the short little legs, the short little legs, and the, usually the legs are white. Okay, the white fur, start from the nose, the face, and then carry all the way down to the belly, okay? A uh, long body type, kind of like a wiener dog, but a little bit more bulkier, okay? Uh, so a lot of times Corgis are fluffy, see? Very fluffy dogs. Okay, so we've got a lot of uh, fluff around the neck. Okay, to the point almost that that uh, the harness doesn't fit. <laughs> okay, so um, something I do see, you no, know, corgis have little eyebrows. See these two little, little eyebrows here and there. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna drag these four reference pictures to the side. Now, if you do have multiple monitors, uh, you can just like just like we can drag drag it onto the, the second monitor and keep looking at it. Um, but if you don't, I would suggest printing it out and then just uh, tape it on your wall or put it beside you and just keep looking at it while you design your character. Okay, just keep looking at it, keep referencing back and make sure that maybe you have some crazy exaggerations. Maybe you have some very cartoony, uh, uh, very cartoony style, but you still want these key features to be in your character design. Okay, because you don't want to make a uh, corgi design and people look at it and say, that's a fox. <laughs> okay, you still want people to look at it and undoubtedly and say, wow, what a wonderful quirky design, um, and not mistaken it for a fox or uh, a husky or, or anything like that, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and drag these to the side and uh, start my uh, basic shapes and forms. I'm going to start drawing my basic shapes and forms. And uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and check out my video, How to Draw in Photoshop. It shows you how to set up uh, the Photoshop to file and how to start drawing, okay? Um, so... When you, uh, when you have, uh, if you have already watched that video or you have a uh, prior knowledge of Photoshop, then let's start. Okay, so let me create a new layer. Uh, Control Shift N. Create a new layer. Control Shift N. Okay, so one quick uh, tip uh, before I start designing. Uh, so since I'm doing like a like, like a character design, I'm doing like kind of neutral pose, and I, a lot of times I like to turn on symmetry. So what symmetry is is when you're in the brush tool. So I hit B, not in the brush tool, and then uh, let me uh, turn on my big mouse so you guys can see. So under the in the brush tool, you'll see a little butterfly icon on top right here. So what it does is if I click on the butterfly icon, I can choose how I want the symmetry to work. So. Now, like I said, you don't need to learn everything. You can experiment with everything, but I'm not going to throw you a whole bunch of explanation and trying to go over every single tool under every single manual. <laughs> I'm going to show you only the vertical one. So I'm just going to click on vertical, okay? And you get this. So you see all these drag handles? Don't move it. What it's trying to do is it's trying to tell you that you can move this off-center and move it up, move it down if you want. We don't need to do that. 
let it stay in the center. It's okay. Just hit the check mark right here, click, and now you see this blue line. So what this blue line does is now whatever you draw on one side of the paper is going to mirror on the other side. Okay, so see? Ah. So let's say if I'm working designing a character, I'm not trying to give him some crazy pose. I can pretty much just work on one side of the character, and the other side will be complete. Okay? So I don't have to draw things again. Okay, I'm going to give him a cape. There you go. Now it's going to get a little bit used to, to do this, you know, but uh, once you get used to it, this is really a time saver. Okay, so that is symmetry. Now, uh, you can turn it off. Let's just say you have some detail that is not uh, symmetrical. You can click right here and say symmetry off. Okay, and I can give him a detail that is not symmetrical, like a sword or something. Ching! Okay, uh, some crazy Goku hair. Okay, <laughs> whatever. And then you can turn it back on. Okay, vertical. Check it. Okay. So, a very, very uh, nice feature in Photoshop uh, when it comes to character design, at least for me, okay? Sa saves me a lot of time. Okay, so this is kind of like my rough uh, idea uh, for this quirky design now. Um, uh, let me show my big mouse again. Okay, so as you can see, like, a uh, pointy mouth like a fox, and then a uh, big tongue hanging out, and, uh, you know, we got the... Uh, little eyebrows. Okay, so uh, let me show you those uh, corgi references that we have. I'm just going to show you one of them. Uh, so this is enough to show you like... Uh, there you go. Okay, so pointy ears. We got pointy ears. Okay, so we have like a uh, uh, big smile, the tongue out, big smile with the tongue out, uh, kind of fluffy all the way around. Okay, uh, so a white belly, a white fur on the face, and then the rest is orange pretty much. Uh, short little legs and long body. Okay, so see like you can tell that it's a corgi. It speaks corgi, uh, but it's got my style. It's got my input. It's got my own thoughts in there. Okay, so I like it. So I'm gonna keep working on it, and then uh, start working on like a more refined drawing. So what I'm gonna do is gonna I'm gonna uh, turn this layer lighter. I'm gonna drag my reference back uh, to the side. Okay, uh, and then right here where it says form figure, I'm going to uh, turn down the opacity. See the opacity here? I'm gonna select a layer and the opacity. I'm gonna turn it from 100 to maybe like 20 percent, so that on my new layer. Okay, I'll be able to trace over it. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna do a control shift and again for a new layer, and this time I'm gonna do a refined drawing. Okay, and on this new layer, when I draw, okay, uh, those rough sketch, the rough sketch will be in my way. Okay, so I'm going to start refining it. Okay, so now I have a very refined drawing and I'm ready for inking. Okay, this character is looking really cool. I really like it. Okay, um, so for my inking, uh, I'm going to actually make everything a light blue color first because uh, it's, uh, I won't be confused with like the ink lines uh, with the pencil lines. So this is technically like the pencil line. And then in like the real world animation world, a lot of times like the, 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 the pencil sketch, would, they used to draw with this uh, with a blue pencil uh, back in the days, like 15 years ago. But they used to draw with blue pencil for their sketch. And when they're going to trace it with a marker to ink it, uh, they're going to use a black marker. So I'm going to replicate that same effect. I'm going to show you how. Okay, so I'm gonna, we're going to throw something on here called a adjustment layer. Okay, uh, so to add an adjustment layer, you want to go all the way on the top where it says layer and then new adjustment layer, and you want to use hue saturation. And I'm going to just call this uh, new set, uh, new layer, I'm going to call it blue pencil. Okay, so I know what this layer is for. And then um, this will pop up, the properties for the blue pencil hue saturation adjustment layer. So I'm going to have to make this a little bit longer to see the whole uh, palette. See that? To see the whole menu, all the options. So enough that you can see the colorize option, you want to check it. See how it gives you it, it gives you a color on your line work, and I want a blue color, so I'm gonna make the saturation all the way up, okay? And then I'm gonna make the lightness enough so I, I don't I no longer see the black lines, okay? So just light enough so that I don't see the black lines. See how the black lines are gone? And then I'm gonna drag the hue. See where the hue is at red right now. So if I, I can drag it along this color bar and change it to any color I want, and I want kind of like a light bluish color, like that. And then I'm gonna make it a little bit lighter, like that. Okay, and that is perfect. That is ready for us to trace. Uh, I'm going to hide the properties and then create a new layer. I'm going to do a Control Shift N, and then this new layer is going to be called Trace. Okay, and I uh, go back to my uh, uh, pencil brush, and now when I draw, see, I won't confuse uh, my sketch with my uh, pencil tr uh, tracing over the, 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 the inking. Okay, so I'm going to start tracing.
Okay, so we finished inking the character. Uh, so if I turn off, so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna turn off these three layers so you can see. So if I turn off the form figure, refine drawing, and uh, blue pencil, you see that we now have nothing left but just the black pencil uh, trace tra tracing. Okay, uh, so. I'm actually going to create a group right now, uh, and put all the basic shapes and form in one folder. So I'm just going to turn these back on, okay, and then I'm going to select all three of them, one, two, three. Okay, so shift select, okay, click one of them, shift select the other ones, and then they come in. Now the shortcut is control G, okay, so when you hit control G, you'll be able to create a new group. I'm going to call this new group uh, basic shape and form, okay, and now I can turn it off because I literally don't need it anymore. I'm just having this folder here as like an archive <laughs> okay so the next step is to uh color it in so before we color color it in we before we put in the midtones let's uh create a flat uh, a flat silhouette of the character it's going to help us um uh, color in the midtone layer okay so let me show you what i mean i'm, I'm going to grab the pencil tool and then uh start tracing the silhouette of the character and fill it in with a color so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a new layer i'm going to do a control shift n and then create this i'm going to call it the midtone Okay, and uh, it's called the midtone layer right now, but we're not doing midtone. We're picking one color, and then we're just uh, pretty much uh, coloring the whole silhouette flat on this midtone layer right now. And I'm not going to use the brush tool. I'm going to use the pencil tool. I'm going to explain why. So the brush tool actually has a soft edge. See how soft edge is? Okay, the pencil tool has a hard edge. See how hard edge is? We want that hard edge because it's going to help us select it better. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, pick a color. So Corgi is kind of like orange in color, right? Uh, so I'm going to pick an orange color, okay? And then uh, use my pencil tool and start chasing, okay? Okay, see how high I have the silhouette of the character traced out? Okay, uh, so next what I'm going to do is just use the pink bucket and color the whole silhouette, okay, with this color. So the pink bucket, the shortcut for the pink bucket is G, okay? So... On the toolbar, pink bucket is right here. Sometimes uh, you need to set it to pink bucket because sometimes it might be in the gradient tool. You have to make sure that it's a, it's a pink bucket instead of gradient tool. Okay, so B for brush, E for eraser, and G for pink bucket. Okay, so I'm, I'm in pink bucket. I still have that orange color selected. I'm in the right layer. All I have to do is click, and the whole thing will be colored in. Okay, uh, now what I want to do is change the layer blending mode from normal to multiply. So there are different layer blending modes. If you click on this normal, uh, it gives you the whole list. Now you don't have to understand what every single one of these do yet. Okay. So all we have to remember, we're going to be using multiply. So what multiply does is that instead of just showing the flat color, whatever color on this layer will be multiplied uh, on the colors that's below, the layers below. Okay. So another, and to put it another way, whatever layer that is below this metal layer, you'll be able to see it. That's why we're able to see our trace line work okay um so why do i change it to multiply because now that i need to color in like the first white uh, the nose gray and so on so they're the tongue pink probably okay so that is why uh, i need to see the line work underneath okay so now i'm going to click on the pencil tool again to go back to my pencil tool and uh, i'm going to show you another feature uh it's to lock the transparency of the layer so let's just say uh, i'm painting this uh let me see um a yellow let's just say i'm adding a yellow onto uh, the color the midtone colors so let's choose a yellow, and if I start painting right now, I'll be able to paint outside the silhouette. So I'm going to do a Control Z. Control Z is to undo. So I'm going to do a Control Z, and then click on this icon right here. This is to lock the transparency. So if when I have lock transparency turned on, I can no longer color outside the silhouette. This becomes very powerful when we're coloring in our midtones, okay? Because we don't have to worry about coloring outside our boundaries, okay? So let's just say I need uh, the feet to be white, uh, maybe like a gray. I don't want it to be perfectly white. I want it to be kind of gray, so I leave some room for the highlight. Highlights are white, white. Okay, so I'm going to control Z to undo, and then I'm just going to demonstrate uh, real quick. Uh, let's just say the feet, okay? So I'm going to choose, like, a gray. I'm going to do a white first. Okay, and I'm just going to start coloring it here. See? I won't color outside. The so what? Okay, then now I can switch. I hit G to switch the bucket tool, okay, and just color it here and here. See that? Very easy. So with that uh, same thing, I can just start coloring all the other midtones in now, okay? All right, so now I have all the midtone colors in here. Now a couple of shortcuts I would like to go over with you. Um, 
very useful is number one is when you're in the ping bucket tool when you're when you hit G when you're in the ping bucket tool you can actually uh, hold down alt and your ping bucket will become a little eyedropper so you can eyedrop and sample sample any color uh, on this layer so for example if I want uh, this pink of the tongue to be right here I can sample this color and then uh, drop it here okay I can sample this color again and drop it here okay so that's a uh, one of the uh, the shortcuts I would like to share with you okay um, so now besides picking color uh, from the color swatch you can also pick color from the foreground color so if you click right here it gives you a full range of color that you can choose now I, I usually use this for my grays so it's because you see right here there's black and white but there's no gray so what I like to do is choose my gray here okay so that's how I got the gray um, for the nose the eyes and all that okay um, so now let's just say I don't like this gray here I want it to be a bit lighter so I can choose a new gray and color it in see I can cut it in so make sure that anti-aliasing is checked off you don't want anti-aliasing on so when you have anti-aliasing turned on it will give you a soft edge around the colors okay that that you picked uh, the areas that you pick will give you like a soft edge you don't want that you want a sharp edge you want to retain that sharp edge so it's easier for us to change colors around okay and then now if you uncheck uh, contiguous uh, so if uncheck that you don't have to click just you don't have to click all the uh, like it was like all the co same color areas so for example uh, we do an undo okay so uh, let's just say I want to change all the grays at once okay and I've cho chosen a new gray somewhere here lighter okay uh, I can just click on one of the area and all the area with the same gray will change at once oh wait I need to have contiguous turned off I'm gonna have the terms turned off and you click see the entire thing will change okay another way to modify color uh, is to use uh, hue and saturation adjustments so um, what you can do is use the one tool so the one tool right here is on the left see the magic wand tool now there are three different tools here make sure you're in the magic wand tool uh, so if I go into V for brush G for paint bucket and W for the wand tool when I have the one tool you want to make sure anti-aliasing is turned off you don't want to have anti-aliasing turned on okay uh, so if you have it turned on again it's gonna give you a soft edge around your selection and it will leave like one pixel unselected okay so that's why I always have it turned off and again I can uh, uncheck contiguous and it's gonna select all the orange at once I can hide the little marquees by doing control H control H will hide or unhide the marquees okay so I'm gonna hide the marquees and do a control U control U is for hue saturation okay and I can play with the hue to give it a different hue or a different color I can play with the saturation to make the colors brighter or more gray I can play with the lightness and make the color lighter or darker okay so so far uh, I think the only thing that I might change is probably the gray I want this gray to be kind of like a, uh, a medium gray so this gray probably a bit too light for me so I'm gonna do I'm gonna use the uh, W uh, match one select it and then control H to hide the marquees and then control U to change the lightness and I'm gonna make it a little bit darker something like that okay and then uh, for all the white fur I'm gonna do a control D right now because I believe this is still selected see if I hit control H the marquee shows up so I'm gonna do a control D to deselect all okay and then I'm gonna use my magic one again and select all the white areas and do a control H to hide the marquees and then I'll do a control U to bring up the hue saturation and I'm gonna just make all those these white furs a little bit darker the reason why is because I want to leave room for the highlights okay uh, so now that looks pretty good okay so I'm gonna hit OK and do a control H again to unhide the marquees and control D to deselect and this is pretty good I'm happy with all my midtone colors and I'm gonna go into shadow now so how do we do shadow where instead of painting the shadow in we're gonna use something called the adjustment layer okay so to add an adjustment layer I'm gonna go here layer the new adjustment layers I'm gonna choose hue saturation and I'm gonna call this adjustment layer shadow okay and I'm gonna make the lightness darker like about 40% oh, I'm sorry I forgot one step let's go back so see how the lightness is affecting the entire document I want it to just affect the character so how do we do that let's do a control Z undo undo again undo again until we don't have that uh, hue saturation layer anymore so before I create a new hue saturation layer I'm gonna do a control click on the midtone layer to have no so, so that all those midtones selected now okay and then now with this silhouette all selected I'm gonna do a layer new adjustment layer hue with saturation okay I'm gonna call it shadow okay all right so now I'm gonna drag the lightness down about 40% and you'll see that it's only affecting the character not the entire document and uh, when things lose light when things are in shadow it loses saturation it loses color so I'm gonna take away the color about 60% now these values you can play around with these are just the values that I like to use you can remove more colors less colors or make it darker so this will be like my shadow layer okay so I'm gonna paint on this shadow layer and I'm gonna explain how I do that 
the, the way I do that, I'm going to drop this new adjustment layer in a folder. So the way I do that is I have to select it, right? And I'll do a Control G. Now it's dropped in a layer, in a group. I'm going to double click the group name and then call this shadow again. And I'm going to create a layer mask on this shadow folder. To do that, I'm going to click this icon right here. See, now I have a layer mask. Now what is a layer mask? A layer mask means now you can paint in black or white. Okay, now white means whatever inside this folder will show. Black means whatever inside this folder will not show. So if I go to my pencil and use like a huge brush, and if I choose a black color and start painting, see why it becomes lighter? It's because whatever that's inside this folder no longer is showing. So what's inside the folder? The shadow layer. Okay, so that means if I paint everything black, I will see no shadow. And if I start painting in some white, I will start seeing some shadow. Does that make sense now? See, and this is how I paint the shadow in. You don't have to go through a tedious process of keep selecting shadow colors, keep selecting colors. You don't have to worry about that. You've done that already in the mid-tone stage. All the colors are set, okay? Now, you just have to decide where does my shadow go, okay? So you're really focusing on designing really like nice shadows. So I'm not going to use my pencil tool to draw my shadow because that looks boring, looks flat. I'm gonna use a, a brush called uh, the Ultimate Pastel Palooza. Okay, it's the second brush that I, I use a lot. So Kyle's Ultimate Pastel Palooza, I'm gonna select it. Okay, and then now I'm gonna use this brush, I'm probably uh, increase this brush to like 200, and start painting with this brush. See that? It gives a very nice edge like that. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna do a Control A to select everything, and then color everything with a white. Okay, so to fill in everything with a foreground color, the command is Alt Backspace. Okay, so I'm gonna fill. I'm actually gonna fill everything with a black color and paint in my shadows. Okay, so I'm gonna do a control backspace again, and fill everything with white. So I'm gonna start painting my shadows now. Okay. Okay, so now I've roughened my shadows, and I, I'm designing the shadow uh, with, the, with, with the lighting direction in mind that everything is coming from the top down. That's why all my shadows are darker, and then uh, you'll see like where cast shadow is. This is so this will be like a cast shadow, and uh, this will be like a form shadow. The form shadow follows the form, and the cast shadow is kind of like, like this big piece of fur is in front of the body, at least like an inch or something. So that's why it's getting like a cat, nice cast shadow from it. Okay, so now let's uh, rough in the highlights. So to do that... Uh, instead of recreating this like this folder structure again, I can just copy this folder. So the, the way to copy the folder is you can drag this folder down, okay, to this plus button, okay, and then drop it. See, now I just made a shadow copy, okay. So I'm going to turn off the visibility for the original folder, okay, so it's not in my way. And then I'm going to unhide the contents and just change the layer from shadow to highlight. Change this from shadow to highlight. Okay, and then I'm gonna select this mask right here, and then do a control A, okay, and then fill in everything with white. All right, so now I'm gonna go to the highlight adjustment layer under this folder, and then instead of making it darker, uh, minus 40, I'm gonna give it like a lighter, plus 60. Type it in. And then the saturation, I'm gonna put it all the way up, so it's super saturated, okay? Now we have like this very bright highlight here, okay? And uh, I'm gonna go back to this mask layer and color it everything black. So now I can paint in my highlights. So let me show my shadow folder again. See, we have our shadow and under, I'm gonna uh, collapse my folder here. And I'm gonna, in this mask, in the highlight mask layer mask, I'm gonna start painting and roughing in my highlights, okay? Okay, so see now I have my highlights roughed in. Uh, so the next uh, step is to refine my shadow and refine my highlights. So now, remember, there are two different types of shadows. Uh, now when, uh, let, let me turn off my highlight folder first, and let's focus on the shadow first. So I'm going to go back to my shadow. Now there are form shadow and cast shadow. So when you have form shadow, kind of like the shadow on the nose, shadow on the hand, uh, a lot of form shadow here, uh, the, so the shadow should be soft. See how it's a hard edge, relatively hard edge right now? We actually want it to be soft. So we're going to blend it with a brush. I'm going to show you how. Now, some shadows are... Uh, uh, Cast shadows. For example, this shadow right here, this shadow right here, 
this shadow right here, they're cast shadows. When you have cast shadows, you can leave it uh, a hard edge, okay? Because it's casted from an object that's closer to the light source. So the way we are going to blend our colors is using the same brush, but we're gonna modify uh, some settings of the brush, okay? So number one, I'm going to go into the brush setting. So I'm gonna click on this folder here, okay? To go into the brush setting, and I'm going to turn on uh, transfer. So when you turn on transfer, uh, that means the harder you press the brush, uh, the more opaque the brush is going to be. The lighter you press the brush, uh, it's going to be more transparent. Okay, that's why pen pressure is turned on. It's got a little exclamation mark. It's telling you, hey, you need a pen tablet for this to work. If you don't have a pen tablet, this is not going to work. Okay, so the pen pressure, I'm going to change it uh, from a minimum of 49% to zero. Okay, so that means if I press very, very, very lightly, I'm going to see nothing. Okay, so when this setting is higher, let's say if I set it at 50%, that means even though you can press very, very lightly with your pen, it's still going to have 50% opacity. It's going to turn down all the way to zero. Okay, so it's truly transparent if I press very, very lightly. Okay, um, now flow jitter, pen pressure, again, 30%, I'm going to change it to zero. Okay, so both minimum are at zero. Okay, and then uh, next, I'm going to change my flow. Okay, flow default setting is at 90%, I'm going to change it to 60%. Okay, so when flows at sixty percent, uh, your brush strokes gonna be more smooth. Okay, so now when I start painting with this uh, pastel brush, it's gonna be behave a little bit differently. It's gonna be more soft and easy to blend. So I'm gonna blend one area for you and show you what I mean. So I'm gonna blend, let's say the nose. Okay, so in the shadow, in the shadow layer. So I'm blending the nose, with the shadow. Okay. See how soft that is. Okay, and when I hit X, I can switch from black to white. See, when I hit X, black, white, black, white. And remember, black, if I paint with black, means I'm erasing it. If I paint with white, it means I'm showing it again. Okay? So see how nicely I've blended the shadow in there? So it no longer has a very hard edge. Okay, very nice and soft. So I'm gonna do that to the entire uh, drawing. Where there's form shadow, I'll make it a very soft shadow. Where there's uh, cast shadow, I'll leave it as a hard edge. Okay, so I pretty much refined all the shadows. Uh, so see now, all the form shadows are very soft. And then when you have a cast shadow, for example, right here, uh, right here, a little bit on the tongue, uh, right here beneath the fur, those will be cast shadows, so I left it hard edge, okay? Uh, so see how the entire character is already very dimensional already after we put in the shadow? I'm gonna punch out the highlights and it's gonna make it uh, even uh, more dimensional, okay? So we're gonna refine the highlights now. I'm gonna turn on the highlight folder. When it comes to highlight, um, most highlights are, are, are like soft around the edge, uh, unless you have a very metallic surface. So when you have a metallic surface, then it's starting to, to get that uh, sharp edge. But uh, for our character this time, no metallic. So it's gonna start soft now, all the highlights, okay? Okay, so now I've softened all the highlights to see how dimensional this whole drawing becomes. So uh, one other tip I would like to share with you when you're drawing with your brush tool, um, a lot of times the shape of the brush will get in the way. See, that is the shape of your brush. So when you hit the, the cap lock, click on the cap lock, you can actually temporarily turn it off. You can turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it off, uh, just in case uh, it's getting in your way. Because when you're painting, uh, you kind of have an idea what size you need to use. Right now, this is a 300 size brush. You know, I usually go from about 200 to 400 uh, when I paint with this brush, the Pastel Palooza. And then uh, for tiny little details, sometimes I will go down to like 150 to 100 brush size. And then when I draw, I can feel it. Okay, so a lot of times I like to just, uh, click on the cap lock and then uh, turn it off. Okay, all right. Cool, so we have highlight, we have shadow, and I'm gonna add one more lighting effect that I usually don't do on my traditional uh, on paper drawings, is the rim light effect. So the rim light is actually uh, just a, a one a thin line of light, like at the corner, at the, edge, uh, at the edge of the shadow, 
Okay, it's it's kind of like someone it's it's someone's lighting it from behind with a rim light. Okay, and then it pops out the character even more, and that's very cool. So let me show you how to do that. Um, I'm just gonna duplicate the highlight layer. Okay, I mean duplicate the highlight folder. Okay, I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna call it rim light. Okay, and again I'm gonna color everything um, black. Okay, so nothing is shown, and uh, I'm just gonna. Uh, uh, expand this folder and rename highlight into rim light again. So rim light. Okay, I'm gonna collapse it. I'm gonna go to the highlight layer mask and start painting in my uh, rim light. Okay, so let me show you how this works. See how well it pops out the entire shape of the character by putting in the rim light, okay, on the edge of the character, of the shadow, especially, okay. So some of these are rim light, some actually, some of these are actually uh, will be like like a reflected light, uh, but it's it's for aesthetic, okay. So in the real light, uh, real world scenario, uh, the rim light, it's a lot of times you're not gonna find in a real world scenario unless it's set up. But since we're designing a character which is trying to showcase all the details, we're designing all these rim lights in there, okay. Now the last step is to create a layer. Control Shift N, create a new layer called uh, Profile. So I'm going to go back and thicken some of the profile lines to uh, pop off uh, the entire character uh, even more. And uh, the whole pose will be more uh, legible. Uh, just bring out the whole character off the page. Uh, so profile line, it's like the arms, the legs, the, the head of the character. Okay, a little details like the nose, the eyes, they're detail lines. They're, those are not the profile lines. So we're going to make the profile lines thicker. It's pretty much go back to our pencil tool, go back to our Kyle uh, Ultimate Pencil Heart, and then uh, just with uh, the same 60, uh, 60 size brush uh, brush size and then just pretty much just trace over the profile lines again to make it thicker. And then uh, once I've done that, you'll see that the whole character pops out even more. Let me show you. Okay, so that actually completes our uh, design. Uh, this is the Corgi design that uh, we're doing in this exercise. So hope you guys enjoyed this drawing tutorial. Let me know in the comments below, you know, what we should draw next. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, now remember, drawing is like playing the piano. You can have the best instructor and the best music sheet in front of you, but like, you might even know the music very well, but if you don't practice, you will not get to where you want to be. It is only through practice that you'll get better and become what you want to be, okay? so. The whole point of my videos is to provide a side-by-side -side training for you on a daily basis. Uh, like riding a bicycle, I might have to hold your hand for you in the beginning, but just keep drawing, and before you know it, you'll be ready. Okay, so I'll see you next time for some more exciting drawings.